Holy Hoost. All right, Papa Bacchus here, sitting down with Maria Olsen of many different movies and a shit ton of fame. Uh, thank you for sitting down with me, Maria. It's, it's my pleasure. pleasure. Thank, thank you so much for inviting, inviting me. me. Well, it's Women in Horror Month, and uh, we like to celebrate in good form, and I've been a fan of your work for a very long time now, so... Oh, well, thank, thank you very much. That's really, really nice to hear that. I think the first thing I saw you in was... Um, I have this association I probably shouldn't mention on camera, um, but Infestation Day One. Which is oh awesome. my! Yeah, um, there was that. I saw you in Bunny Man Massacre recently, with one of the most epic opening scenes I think I've ever seen in a movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no spoilers, but let's start the movie by killing a bus full of children. <laughs> right. That's some heavy and shit. <laughs> the scariest thing about that was that they let me drive the bus. Granted, only for about five feet, but I drove that bus. That's not an easy thing to do. I mean, I'm no, not sure you I was have terrified. To get like certification for that or something. Yes, and we had a bus driver there, you know, obviously watching over me and making sure I didn't do anything odd. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, it was pretty scary. So I was uh, doing a little bit of research and I saw that. In just the last seven years, you've got 128 credits. Do you, do you sleep? I mean, <laughs> how do you get all that in? Um, I get all of that in because I am a character actress, not a leading lady. So when I book a film, I have one, two, three, four, five, maybe more days on it, which means I can fit 10 films if it's one day each in a month. Whereas the leading ladies who get three weeks, four weeks, five weeks on something will not be able to do that. Sure. So, sure. yeah. And, um, that's, sorry, yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off there. No problem. I was just going to say, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> so what have you been working on recently? Anything you can tell us about? Um, I shot two wonderful music videos, which I'm not yet allowed to speak about, but they should both be um, premiering over the next few weeks, and I will be posting links to them with great, amazing artists. Um, I just shot scenes in Another Bleeding Lovery, which is a hilarious serial killer uh, black comedy um, that, yeah, that, I on, that I shot with Austin Sheely in Baltimore over last weekend, which was great fun. I love the city, got to see a bit of it. Um, shot my scenes. We had a wonderful day. Yeah, um, black, horror comedy and, is very hard to do. Oh, hard. yeah. It's one of like the most difficult things, you know, and when it falls, it falls flat on its face. But I think it's one of my favorite genres, actually. I would absolutely agree. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where you have your bad horror movies that are so bad they're funny, <laughs> but yes. to be like intentionally funny and not overdo it completely, very difficult. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I saw some of the footage while I was in Baltimore with Austin, and I was rolling on the floor. Oh, really? With, specifically with one scene. It was just too funny. It was just too funny. So, yeah. All right. And what kind of a release date are you looking at on that one? Not sure on that yet. We will be uh, wrapping in about two. Austin and his wife, Kirsten, are actually going to Kenya for a year. She's writing a dissertation. So he's taking all his um, editing software, etc., etc., with him, and he's going to be working on that while in Kenya. So we'll probably be looking at an early 2016. Okay. And is that one of the nine different tiles that you've got in post right now? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I know there's a lot to keep track of, but... <laughs> That's why we're talking. <laughs> so, yes. so what's, um, what's the project you're most excited about right now? I know I've heard of a couple. I don't want to mention anything without you know, giving anything away, but what are you most excited about? Um, the one that is out there and available to be seen that I'm most excited about is obviously Starry Eyes. That is making a splash like nothing I have ever seen that I've been in. I've actually uh, seen that movie. Everybody is like amazed by it as they should be and especially as brilliant it's beyond brilliant and the whole film is just so different and so engaging and so funny and so scary and so oh my god what is she gonna do with that dumbbell thing yeah. you know yeah. it's like it it's really leaves a, it's haunting it really left me with like a very lasting effect you know you're right the, you're the casting director in that movie right I play the casting director, yes. Um, actually, I have uh, the honor of being 
I believe, the first cast member that was attached to that film, way back when it was just a short film, and we were just saying, all right, we'll shoot it over a weekend. Yeah, I'll do that, Dennis. Thank you. And then it turned into this amazing thing. Wow. So, yeah, I was really lucky to get into that one from the grassroots, yeah. That's amazing. So, mm -hmm. um, that accent, are you British? No, I'm South African, actually. South African? Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah, your yes. IMDb bio is not very, uh, doesn't go into great detail there. Well, I don't know who wrote it, and I've never had the time really to update it. Oh, so, okay. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> Well, they didn't know that you were from South Africa. Uh, all right, yeah, I'll put my South African accent back on, shall I, and you can hear it better. There we go, wow. <laughs> so, uh, in South Africa, what got you into acting? Oh, um, I've been on stage since I was about six years old. Uh, first of all, with dancing shows, my mom put me into dance classes, and um, I had about 12 years of that, and then I moved into plays, musicals, straight plays, a bit of radio work in South Africa, not film, because I was very, very far away from the, the film centers of the country. Um, it was only when I came here in 2005 that I started getting into film, and I booked my first projects in 2006. Wow. And yeah, pretty much never looked back. Very interesting. Yeah, I noticed it. it seemed like just right around 2006 to 2008, you really just started blowing up. Pretty much. I. Um, I submitted for everything that I was vaguely suitable for, and sometimes I would get like five auditions a day, which is like overwhelming, you know? Oh my God. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I just started booking stuff, mm -hmm. and I could see myself um, on screen in the things that I had booked, and I was like, oh, okay, my, um, my, my presence on screen is really intense. So let's go for the, the horror, which I love anyway. Um, the science fiction, the fantasy, the very heavy drama, things like that. Um, and I submit, and the really weird, wacky, off-the-wall comedy, funnily enough. Yeah. I submit with those um, different types of projects, and those are the ones I mainly book. So, yeah, find your niche and, and work on it, yeah. is my advice. <laughs> I think uh, I think that you've certainly done it successfully. If anyone can take anything away from this, you are certainly someone worthy of emulation. Oh, uh, thank you. So, um, did you ever have any formal training, or is this just a natural thing for you? Um, I had a couple of years of speech and drama classes at high school, um, but we did things like read poetry and read plays and stuff. I've never really had acting classes. I've never taken an acting class here, for instance. Um, I, if I ever find somebody that I think I can learn from, I definitely will. At the moment, I am quite happy with my own process, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it, is my thought. Sure, yeah. You know? <laughs> you certainly seem to be a bit of a social media maven as well. I mean, you've got quite an impressive Twitter presence. Uh, what's your mm -hmm. secret there? Um, I sit at home a lot when I'm not shooting, and I'm online most of the time. Um, I like, <laughs> yeah, I like getting things out there, but I, I won't say, like my IMDb page, look at my reel, look at my this, do this for me. I will say, have a look at this project, and 99 times out of 100, I won't even say, oh yeah, and I'm in it. I'll just say, watch this trailer, look at this website, have a look at this film. I like offering entertainment to people. I don't like asking people to do stuff for me. So that's more humble. You're not, you know, selfishly motivated. Yes, I'm just, I know I'm in the most look at me profession ever, but I'm not really into that. I'm into sharing work and supporting other people and just doing what I love, which is acting and directing and writing and producing. Fantastic. Wow. Yeah. It's, it's really inspirational to finally get a chance to talk to you. I've certainly been following you uh, a while, so thank you for dropping you. by. Um, of course. Um, before we wrap up, is there anything else uh, upcoming that our viewers should be uh, aware of? Absolutely. Um, another film I co-produced, Reunion, which is a horror um, slash psych thriller, is in the final stages of post-production and we should be out completely by April. Um, we've already got distributors sniffing at our heels. Ooh. It's looking beyond amazing, um, and I cannot wait for that to get out there. Really, I cannot. It's my biggest and most intense role so far, that in Gore Orphanage, which is up for the most anticipated title of 
2015 um, through the Horror Society Awards. Oh, and really? there's still a couple days to vote for that. So everybody vote, yes. Yeah, you know what, I'll include that information uh, in the article. Okay. Awesome. All right, Maria, well, thank you for dropping by. Of course, thank you again. This was such fun. All right, cheers. Bye.